Greetings, everyone. Welcome to TN Seal Wellness Wednesday. I am Dr. Catherine Y. Brown, your host. Today, I am excited to introduce you to our guest, <laughs> Russell Acklin Sr. Mr. Acklin, welcome to TN Seal Wellness Wednesday. <laughs> Thank you all for having me. Thank you all for having me. Now, I've had the opportunity to learn about a lot of the work and things that you have been doing in the community as it relates to COVID-19, but our viewers haven't. So rather than read your bio, I just want this to be a conversation. So tell all of our viewers around the world a little about your background and all that you have been doing on the front lines as it relates to COVID-19. Okay. Um... Russell Ackland Sr., I'm a native of Nashville, Tennessee, uh, graduate of Pearl Cone Comprehensive High School, graduate of Fisk University, graduate of Morgan State University. Um, since I uh, started doing this, we've been doing a lot of frontline work, as you said. Um, I've also had the luxury of being the assistant men's basketball coach at Fisk, so that's given me the opportunity to make sure um, – the students over there are vaccinated as well. So it's almost like I've been doing a, a dual role. Yeah. I'm here making sure people get vaccinated and I'm over there making sure they get vaccinated. Oh my God. So um, <laughs> sometimes uh, like before we went to New Orleans, we had this rush vaccination. So we had to get all of the student athletes together at one time. Thank God to uh, Dr. Farmer Dixon for coming through in the clutch and she got all of the kids vaccinated and tested and everybody was able to get on the bus and travel because it's been kind of troublesome traveling to um, different cities in the middle of this pandemic. It's something we've been dealing with for two years and we've been trying to navigate being able to travel and still compete with all of the guidelines and uh, restrictions on transportation and things of that nature. Um, like I said, I'm a father of three, husband, um, I like cooking. Um, anytime I can find some downtime, <laughs> Oh, yeah. I try to take it full advantage of it, but it's kind of difficult when you got an 18, a 14, and a nine-year-old. It's not a lot oh, of down. You answered it because that was my next question. I was going to say, tell me the age. So you said 18, 14, and nine. Yeah. Said, this is amazing, right? So you have to tell all of our viewers, how did you maintain a balance between family life, health, and then also the work that you were doing in the in the community. Did you see that? I mean, how did this all impact you from the family lens versus the role that you play in the community? Because people forget that just because you're on the front lines in the community doesn't mean that you don't have a family who you are also on the front lines for. Um, I just try to keep in mind to stay as flexible as possible. Okay. Um, and I... Flashback to just a day ago, uh, my son's at karate. Uh, my wife's about to turn 40 and she wants to go to the beach. So she has to get this beach body together. So what do we do? While the son's at karate, we go to the gym and ride the bike for five miles real fast for 30 minutes. So we get done with that in 30 minutes, pick the boy back up, back home. So, I mean, it's just, you got to learn how to maneuver and use the technology that we have available I mean, most situations right now aren't ideal. They're not. But you still have to find a way to maneuver through what you need to get done. Absolutely. So what do the words community mean to you? Because you're in the community. Um, community means a lot to me. Um, there's an old saying, a uh, product of the village. I am a product of my village. Um, I grew up in the... Um, Metro public housing all the way through high school. So dad wasn't necessarily there. So I always had outside external entities assisting in my upbringing, coaches, uh, friends of my, uh, my family, friends of, family members of my friends, things of that nature. So in my mind, I can't give them a check. I can't give them uh, a gift. I can't do anything tangible to say, hey, thank you. Mm -hmm. So the best way I know about going to do that, telling them thank you and letting them know that the work they put into me, I'm paying it forward is by working in the community, getting in the community, getting my hands dirty. Um, as a member and a graduate of Fisk University, um, we have a responsibility to go out and try to change the world. As um, Dr. Du Bois um, 
came up with the, te the theory of the talented tenth. That's something that's always looming in my head, that I'm a member of the Talented Tenth. It's my duty to go out and change the world. It's my responsibility to go out and try to make things better than they were the generation in front of me. So then the generation that comes behind me, all they have to do is pass the baton to them, and then they pick it up and they keep on running. So community means a lot to me because that's our base. That's that's our home plate. And I was always taught as a kid in any sport, always protect home plate. That's baseball, that's kickball, that's dodgeball protect home. So I'm always trying to make sure home is taken care of. I've been here all but seven years of my life while I was in grad school in uh, Baltimore. The rest mm -hmm. of the time I've been in Nashville, I've seen it grow. I've seen it start out as boot scoot and boogie. And now they're talking about giving us a Super Bowl. So, oh. hey, I mean, certain things that we have to put in place to make sure the community is able to be taken care of. And uh, my boss, Dr. Smoot, always harps to me. Russell, make sure people know and feel that they can trust coming to Meharry. That's mm -hmm. how it used to be back in the day. So now we're fighting and doing everything in our power to get people back to the notion that, hey, Meharry is a trustable entity to get your health and wellness taken care of. Absolutely. So, you know, we've been in this thing for a lot longer than what we ever could have imagined, imagined right? So what is the message that you want our viewers to know they're watching this episode different times, different time zones, but as it relates to COVID-19 and just being healthy, what is the message that you want to share? Um, to quote one of my uh, favorite groups coming up, Public Enemy and Flavor Flay, <laughs> don't believe the hype. Um, one of the things that I never thought I would spend as much time as I have while working on this was displacing myths. There are so many myths that are dropped like bombs. And once they're dropped, then there's no taking them back. Mm -hmm. And people's minds get warped by these myths and they get in their heads that this is the actual reality of the situation. And it's really not. See, like right now, most people think we're out, we're in the clear, everything is great. Hey, we can go back to normal. And we're not even at 60% total vaccination across the state yet. So it's a lot of stuff that I think if I could tell the viewers to go ask questions, contact somebody you know, or contact Meharry, contact uh, the health department, contact people who actually are in the trenches dealing with this and not just go by hearsay. Mm -hmm. um, I was talking to my daughter yesterday and her and one of her classmates were trying to defuse the situation. And we were telling our daughter, if you get in front of it and tell the person the truth, then you have less to deal with on the back end. Mm -hmm. so with this situation hey people if you get in front of it ask the people who know the truth then we don't have that much to deal with on the back end like most people don't know um there's still variants that we don't know about fully in circulation right now mm -hmm. but everybody thinks hey we got the mask mandates taken off we can go back outside yeah it's a party let's go no you still got to be safe still mask up if you haven't been vaccinated go get vaccinated if you haven't been vaccinated Go find out the information to get you to pro or con on why you should or should not be vaccinated. If you've been vaccinated, get boosted. I mean, whatever you can do to be proactive on this is the best way you can go about dealing with it. You can't wait till it hits you and then you're stuck in a rut. Be proactive. I love it. So for our viewers, I don't want you to miss because uh, Russell has dropped some amazing gems. He has said, be safe, ask questions, and be proactive, right? And so that that's really powerful, right? Because we need to be proactive instead of reactive. And so you've reminded right. us of that today. So my next uh, question for you is this. How can all of these people watching this get in touch with you? How can they stay connected with you? Um, you can, It's probably easier to email me at um, R-A-C-K-L-I-N at mmc.edu. My email is consistently going blue, 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 blue when I'm in games, when I'm in practice, when I'm fighting the kids, whatever. But I always check the email. Now, it might be a little while before I can get to all the phone calls, but I definitely check all the emails. So it's probably easier to email me. Hey, I'm a I'm an open book, man. Anytime you want to talk, I have my whole house has been vaccinated, boosted. So I got every age bracket you can think of if you want to talk about 
what symptoms they had, what symptoms they didn't have, whatever, which, et cetera. Um, I've gone to at least 50 vaccination events in the past year. Oh my goodness. That we set up ourselves. Oh, so yeah. I've been there where I'm the only person in the building that can't speak English. And I just do this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. whatever info is needed, I'm here for you. All right. Very good. So listen, the last question is really an easy one. And it's all about you. Is there anything else that you would like to share with our viewers? Uh, If you get a chance, come out or not necessarily come out, but if you get a chance, go over and just check out some of the things that are happening over at Fisk. Um, You'd be surprised at the growth of that university right now. Sometimes I feel like it gets overlooked because it's just in such a small, quaint, quiet little corner over there. Mm-hmm. But that school has so much rich, rich history and legacy behind mm-hmm. it. Like the average person doesn't know it's the oldest institution of learning in Nashville. Mm-hmm. Nobody knows that. So, I mean, it's little gems like that that you can just stumble across and it might fuel your fire or get you over the hump to see about, okay, let me take on this challenge and things of that nature. Um, other than that, I always remember people, it could be worse. No matter what your situation is, it could always be worse. And if it can always be worse, then you have an opportunity to fight through what you're dealing with. I love it. Thank you so no much. No worries. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Here. I mean, yes, and we definitely have to have you back. So for anytime. our, okay, now you all heard it. He said anytime, so I'm going to take him up on that. <laughs> so for our viewers, around the world. We want you to share this message and join us back next week for another episode of TNCO Wellness Wednesday. You don't want to miss it. Until next time, stay healthy, stay connected, stay informed. I am Dr. Catherine Y. Brown, your host, and I will see you next time. Thank you again, Mr. Acklin. Thank you. (laughs)